I don't know what I'm going to use them for. If that's what you're asking me, I'm sure that they will let me know. Hey there, it's me, Lottie. And today we are still working on my fall TBR. I just had way too many books to make one video. So I decided to continue it in another day, another video. Um, I'm just sharing with you some of the things that I've accumulated here over the summer, different gifts and thrift stores and discount stores and some online ordering too. So today we're going to take a look at some of the other books that I have that are on my TBR. I don't know when I'll get to them, but fall is a great time and winter is a great time for slowing down and cooking more and planning your year to come and maybe doing some self-care work too. So I'm hoping to be doing just that. Now the first book I got, I was out with a friend of mine and we stopped in the Boston Tea Room, which is a great little, meta, well, it's a big metaphysical store here in Michigan. And they have a wonderful variety of crystals and tarot cards and all the woo, total and complete woo. And the last thing I needed probably was yet another book on plants, but you know. And this is called The Wild and Weedy Apothecary an A to Z book of herbal concoctions, recipes, and remedies, practical know-how, and food for the soul by Doreen Shababi, or Shababi. Ah, uh, isn't that cover beautiful? I was really taken with the cover, first and foremost. It says, just outside your doorstep or kitchen window, hidden beneath a tall pine tree, or twining through the porch lattice work. A wild and weedy apothecary waits to be discovered. This guidebook is jam packed with a dozen, dozens of tasty recipes and natural remedies, including glorious garlic and artichoke dip, sunny oatmeal crepes, candied catnip leaves, lavender lemonade, roseberry tea, parsnip hair conditioner, so, you know, I flipped through it real quickly and I like that it's arranged like, you know, alphabetically like L is for lemon balm, you know, and talks about then uh, talks about the herb and how to use it as a herbal remedy and how to use it in the kitchen. And then it follows up with some recipes. This is for lemon balm pesto with almonds. M is for mint. Very refreshing talks about how many different kinds of mint there are. And then we have a white wine with orange and mint infusion. So what got to me is that I was intrigued by the recipes that were in here. So I picked this one up. We'll do some stuff with this together over the next fall, winter season. The next one I ordered, now I follow Mo Wild on Facebook. And I really got intrigued because there was a challenge, a personal challenge. Mo Wild made a quiet but radical pledge to live only off free foraged food for an entire year in a world disconnected from its roots Eating wild food is both culinary and healing, social and political. Ultimately, it is an act of love and community. Now you know, that really appealed to me. That has appealed to me. I mean, I have thought about doing a similar challenge, although I don't think I'm quite ready to do a whole year of only free foraged food. But just getting more into my system, isn't this another lovely cover? The Wilderness Cure. So I'm really looking forward to hearing. This is Mo Wild's story of foraging for food and medicine. It's an inspiration to us all. She brings home the need so many of us have for the wild redeemer 
as a part of our diet and lives. And that uh, blurb is from Stephen Harrod Buner, a uh, noted herbalist that I respect a lot. So I'm really looking forward to reading this book. This is another book that I got that appealed to me because I'm really trying to get more back, get back more, get more back. <laughs> okay, I'm really trying to make more art to get back to my practice of actually drawing and painting and just really infusing my life with art. And this is called The Green Sketching Handbook, Relax, Unwind, and Reconnect with Nature by Dr. Ali Foxen. It says it's a field guide for joy spotters. Can you see that? I love that it says take five minutes to unwind with this beginner's guide to sketching nature. Self-taught artist and former climate change advisor, Dr. Ali Foxen shows you how to step away from life's stresses and savor a mindful moment outdoors. So it looks like there are different assignments plus technique. So just showing you. And I, you know, my major was art. So I'm not like, oh, I'm, you know, I don't know how. But sometimes I need the little push to, well, go do it then. If you know how to do it, go do it. <laughs> I'm excited by this book also. Can't you tell? <laughs> Okay, this one is just a fun find. It's not exactly a book, but I found this at the discount store. And these are fantastical fairy flashcards. I didn't know I needed fairy flashcards. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to use them for, if that's what you're asking me. So look at them. They're beautiful. They have like the seasons, elements and crystals or gemstones, which is so interesting, you know? And then on the other side of each one is a cute fairy. I don't know what I'm gonna use these for. I feel like, here's the sun. They're beautiful. They're hard, this nice card stock here, aquamarine. They're beautiful. I mean, I don't know. I might incorporate them into an icebreaker for a workshop or a retreat. Um, I'm sure I could use it sort of in an oracle card fashion, but I really think it'd be cute to find out how to use them either as a learning tool with the kids or in some of my herbalism classes, you know, incorporate these as an icebreaker of some sort, they will let me know. I'm sure that they will let me know. So that's my little herby outdoorsy roundup. And I hope that you found that interesting. I can't wait to dig into some of those and share more of what I find inside with you. Um, if you like videos like this, please like this video and share it. It really helps with the algorithm to get me on up there, you know. And I hope that you're well and that you're taking really good care of yourself. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.